We are the Purposeful Project. We help entrepreneurs for free. Welcome to today's pep talk, where we'll take just 20 minutes to interview leading experts from around the world who share actionable know-how, insights and life lessons. To hear these incredible insights, follow us on Spotify, Apple Music or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Or you can simply visit thepurposefulproject.com, sign up to our mailing list and get the podcast in your inbox every single week. Hi, Leo. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you here for this special edition of Start Me Up Festival Hong Kong podcast. I'd love to hear from you and maybe my audience to know a little bit about who you are and and what you do. Thank you so much, Simon. Um, It's uh, my honor to join this uh, podcast section. Uh, My name is Leo, Leo Lo, uh, founder of Asia Prop Tech. Um, this year, because of Start Me Up Festival, I uh, invite Asia Pop Tech to be one of the main event organizers. So it is great that um, Invest Hong Kong, uh, the Start Me Up Festival Hong Kong, uh, has finally we have the uh, Prop Tech vertical within the festival. So uh, in our event, um, we will uh, in, we actually invite a lot of uh, Prop Tech influencers around the world. Um, to share about their insights on uh, what PropTech is and uh, what PropTech is going on. Uh, we have investors, we have real estate companies, we have startups. Uh, we also have a uh, half-day program that target for the youth, uh, the, the, the youngsters, um, because they are also interested in uh, what PropTechs are developing now. So. Um, maybe for the listeners that don't know what prop tech is, can you give some examples or, or explain it a little bit? You mean you mean prop tech, right? Yes. Yep. Um, actually, you know, prop tech is kind of a. To me, I think it's a it's a buzzword. Uh, we so far we don't have a very uh, a solid definition, but it involves any uh, technologies or any business model innovations that can facilitate the real estate and construction industry. So in our industry, we, we actually, we, we, we are talking about a PropTech 3.0. So that means uh, we basically, we transform from a PropTech 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. So in the industry, I think we, we have already um, put this on the table for discussion over uh, eight years. Um, it depends on which technologies you're using. Uh, or which business model innovation you, you, you adopt in the real estate and construction industry. For example, uh, co-working would be a prominent example in prop tech. And uh, talking about AI, talking about data analytics, um, talking about uh, blockchain, I think there would be uh, many different kinds of applications uh, in the real estate and construction industry. Will it uh, elongate into things like mortgages and how people buy property? I mean, is it all going on the blockchain? Is that is that is that the future? Yeah, uh, because uh, you know, um, brick and mortar business is kind of a, a very traditional business. Uh, somehow, uh, this sector is lagging behind compared with uh, finance industry. So they have fintech. Uh, for the healthcare industry, they have healthcare, uh, health tech. Um, your, your example is uh, one of the uh, uh, prop tech solutions. That means uh, if we can use a blockchain, for example, to record some property titles, uh, compound with the, uh, say, uh, cryptocurrency, and then we can, uh, basically we can do real estate financing or mortgaging uh, by the blockchain platform uh, in a very seamless um, situation compared with the old times. For example, uh, in Sweden, uh, they have uh, uh, completed a blockchain uh, program. That means um, they, they're now recording the property titles on blockchain and they work with the local telecommunic- telecommunication companies and also work with lawyers. They shorten basically the time for transferring a property titles in Norway uh, involving the uh, 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 buy and sell, involving the mortgaging. Uh, from traditionally, we need maybe one month to complete a transaction, but now they they just um, maybe for <clears throat> two days, three days, they can complete a property title transfer. Mm. So that's an example of prop tech. Do you think prop tech's going to disrupt anyone in particular? I mean, I, I feel like the model of buying a house 
and, and, and buying a flat in Hong Kong, for example, or it's, it's, it's out of the reach for a lot of people. But, you know, if you positioned it like a Bitcoin, you could buy a fraction of a house, right? Or you can, is, is that the future, do you think, within, within the property world? Uh, yeah, I think we, uh, so far, honestly, I don't think we have seen any uh, completed case on this, uh, what you mentioned about fractionalized the property uh, titles or investments, but people are working hard uh, to go for this direction. So uh, many people in the prop tech industry talking about to democratize you know, the, prop, uh, the property investment. Mm. So before any innovation, you know, uh, taking Hong Kong as an example, I'm based in Hong Kong, you know, Hong Kong's housing price is uh, the number one in the world. Uh, people are always you know, uh, think, uh, face the difficulties in buying homes. Mm. Uh, but with uh, PropTech, probably they can do the investments, they can buy home in a more, you know, um, uh, cost efficient way. Mm. And in terms of uh, the economics, for example, um, it can save a lot of transaction cost. So that means um, that would, uh, I, I can say it enables uh, the real estate transactions uh, but so far, uh, it's still a journey to go to disrupt or totally disrupt the industry. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I was saying that uh, it enables the real estate uh, transactions mm. by PropTech. Your day job, um, maybe tell the audience a little bit about what you do during the day, but I know you, in, you, you support and invest in prop tech ideas. Is there anything that pops out that you're involved in now that you think, wow, this is, this is really exciting? All right. Um, actually, you know, I'm not coming from the tech background. Uh, I'm a real estate uh, background. I'm, I, I, I was trained it as a, uh, what we call chartered uh, estate surveyor. So suppose I work in a real estate investment, uh, the land administration sector, uh, we do uh, a property consultancy, for example. So this is my uh, uh, very basic uh, daily job. But uh, because of prop tech and because of my domain knowledge in this uh, real estate industry, so uh, my company, uh, I'm running uh, different arms. Uh, one of the entities are focusing on prop tech uh, investment and also the prop tech consultancy services. Mm. So a lot of the people that listen to this podcast are young people thinking of starting a business or have a business and wondering how to grow it. I mean, I always like the uh, story of like, you know, you could buy a Tesla or you could buy Tesla shares. You know, the Tesla might have yeah. gone half down in value, but the Tesla shares have gone up 10 times, right? So do you think like property, for example, going forward, it's always been so, as you say, the traditional model of buy a property, hold it. But do you think that it's now going to be about investing in businesses that invest in property as opposed to buying property direct? Do you think that's the future? Yeah, I, I do think that's the future because um, uh, compound, I mean, I mean uh, in terms of prop tech, because I mentioned that um, uh, no matter what technologies you're using, um, anything that can facilitate the real estate transactions, uh, that will be regarded as prop tech. And in the future, I foresee that um, not a single technology can really you know lead us to that direction but if we combine uh, say uh, AI blockchain with data analytics um, even for um, for, for, for the um, uh, mixed reality for example I foresee that we can reach you know the destination you mentioned uh, but of course I think uh, for any tech or even fintech I think we need the government support very much because Somehow, um, property investment is a kind of uh, um, the thing that would be regulated, you know, by by different governments, just like <clears throat> um, stock market. Mm. So, um, any anything new, uh, any new technologies, uh, the government would uh, normally take a uh, comparatively speaking conservative uh, approach. But I appreciate that uh, some governments in the world they would uh, provide a sandbox for uh, fintech, for prop tech, and uh, taking real estate financing by technology as an example. Mm. Um, it involves a collective investment scheme. So in Hong Kong, for example, if the operator for real estate financing platform, they may properly need a license uh, that, is re that is regulated by the Security and Futures Commission. Um, so what, I'm, what I want to say is, 
uh, I definitely I see the future like what you mentioned, but we need all the support, not only from the tech sector, not only from the real estate sector, but also from the government. Interesting. Now, you are based in Hong Kong, and as I think you just mentioned, it's one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world. But it's also, in my view, one of the most innovative markets in the world. I think it's got uh, some really interesting uh, opportunities to, to lead the charge on property technology. But uh, is there any um, Hong Kong startups that stand out to you as like doing really interesting things? Is there any one you want to highlight? And um, I'm really interested to you know, hear your view on who you think will be the next Hong Kong unicorn. Um, honestly speaking, uh, uh, PropTech is just getting started in Hong Kong, so um, I, I, I think I can't uh, name any uh, potential unicorn so far, but I, I, I really hope to see seeing some unicorns happen here in Hong Kong. Uh, for the interesting uh, PropTech companies, I would uh, say some, some of them, like um, uh, one is working in energy uh, monitoring, uh, for buildings, mm. I think that would be quite uh, promising because you know uh, many uh, real estate uh, companies in Hong Kong are listed companies, and you know we uh, we have the ESG you know initiative. Uh, especially is compulsory for all listed companies. That means it, they, they need to focus on uh, how, uh, using more technology or innovation for making themselves uh, green. So uh, anything like uh, energy monitoring <clears throat> or any technology or prop tech that can help uh, for the energy saving of buildings, that would be great and maybe a potential unicorn. Uh, for the real estate investment side, uh, I understand that uh, some companies are working hard on what we call uh, automated valuation models. Um, that, uh, that That's actually dealing with the uh, property uh, valuation uh, plus site analysis mm. by using data, by using AI. Mm. Um, I can say it's just getting started, but I foresee that that would be quite promising as well because um, many institutional investors, uh, many real estate developers or companies, they need uh, some uh, non-biased analysis on the property or development mm. sites. Mm. So AI can definitely help. I think that uh, some of the most prominent startup ecosystems in the world, like San Francisco, for example, yeah. has the most expensive property, right? It's some, some, they're actually a correlation yeah. between yeah. opportunity and property prices, right? So, so I think Hong Kong is an amazing market to go and start a business because it's got a valuable yeah. property market. There's a lot of people yeah, with money to invest in your business, for example. Like yeah, I, actually, I want to add one point because um, uh, we regarding prop tech, I think there are two hubs in the world so far. One is in London, okay, and uh, that is uh, the hub of prop tech in Europe. And the other one, uh, people would say uh, New York uh, in North America, in the US. And But uh, back to Asia, I think so far we don't have a particular hub for prop tech. But I, I can say as a Hong Konger, or as a guy based in Hong Kong, I think uh, Hong Kong would be uh, quite uh, potentially being uh, would be the hub of prop tech in Asia, given what you mentioned, uh, the property transactions is uh, very vibrant here, uh, very frequent, and the amount, I mean, the transactor is also huge. So that would be, uh, I think, Hong Kong plus uh, uh, what we say Greater Bay Area, mm. that is the southern side of uh, China, mm. uh, I think would be potentially the hub of uh, prop tech in Asia. That would be a great market. Yeah. Yeah. So I know. I know. I'm um, sorry to go back to the same question, but you know, is there any prop tech company that stands out that you think, wow, this one's really interesting? Yeah, I think um, uh, I want to mention uh, one company called Entrack. Um, they are doing uh, what I'm, I just mentioned about the uh, energy uh, monitoring things uh, for buildings, um, and also the ABM company called CHFT. CHFT. They do. Uh, they do great in ABM. Yeah, it's um, it's it's definitely. Uh, I, I I'm I'm seeing so many companies come out of Hong Kong now. I guess. It, it, do you think that the next step for the um, Hong Kong market is to uh, get get more people to come in, more talent to come into the market, or do you think it's about nurturing the existing talent? 
Uh, I think Hong Kong uh, is a very interesting market that uh, is also acts like a platform. <clears throat> so answering your question, I would say, uh, as I know, for example, in, in my connections, because we, we, we often do uh, some collaboration with the European prop tech uh, circles, um, many European prop tech companies, they also want to expand themselves and they would choose Asia. And after they chose Asia, they would like to come to Hong Kong because um, they would think Hong Kong is a kind of stepping board uh, for them to do business in China or even the Southeast Asia. So I, I would like to say is um, definitely there will be more talent coming to Hong Kong to develop a prop tech um, that's happening, actually. Some years ago, one to two years ago, I met people in Russia, uh, in, in, in Finland, uh, in, in Sweden. I think I, I met them again in Hong Kong after, after one to two years because they, they decided to move to Hong Kong already. So um, definitely, I think uh, talents are coming. Um, we should grab the chance uh, to make Hong Kong as a hub. I, I agree. Well, um, I want to thank you, Leah, for coming on and, and sharing your knowledge. And just before we close, any words of wisdom for aspiring entrepreneurs? All right. Um, I think um, to share uh, a, a kind of a wisdom um, that because uh, of my identity as a Hong Konger, I think in, in Cantonese, you know, we speak at Cantonese. Uh, one thing uh, for entrepreneur, I would say, uh, we need to sick uh, Zhongyan. Um, that means, uh, literally means, uh, you, you need to know how to behave as a man or as a, as a woman. Uh, of course, it's not uh, just, just doesn't mean uh, just on the, uh, literally mean this uh, service. Uh, meaning, but it, it implies that as an entre entrepreneur, I think we need to handle many, many other things. Not only your solution, not only your business model, but also you need to work with different people, uh, including uh, your staff. <clears throat> so I would say uh, soft skills or how to behave yourself, that would be uh, the very important thing to, to be a successful entrepreneur, mm. is all directions not only your business model. Yeah, I, I, um, I, you know, having lived in Hong Kong for 20 years myself, I always, I always love these insights, where the way language, the nuance of language and what it means. But uh, my, 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 I guess my translation is um, do the right thing, be a decent person, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. treat, yeah. Treat, treat people well. All you've really got is your legacy, yeah, right? You know. well. yeah, try to manage uh, the people around you uh, smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yep. Smartly. Wise words, Leo. Um, it's, well, it's a pleasure to chat to you today. Thank you for what you're doing to support Hong Thank Kong. So and no, and I and I love property tech. Yeah. So keep us informed as uh, the technology advances and what's going on. And we'll put your links down below. Anyone that's listening to Leo and wants to know more about what he's doing, we'll put Leo's links down below. But Leo, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and sharing your, your knowledge. Thank you so much, Simon. Thank you for listening to Pep Talk today, powered by the Purposeful Project. If you found it interesting, please give us a review and follow us. In addition, you can sign up to our website and get loads more free entrepreneur knowledge, as well as get access to Pep Talk and the Purposeful Project podcast direct in your inbox every week.